More than 30 million people have died of HIV already. 1.5 million people even now become newly infected every year with HIV. And the world spends a lot of money on drugs to help people infected with HIV and make it a survivable illness. Pharmaceutical companies have also now shown that they can deliver the antiretroviral drugs to uninfected people as a way to prevent infection. And that is a great advance that will save lives. But it will also face economic and social challenges in trying to get all people at risk of HIV to take these drugs regularly and permanently. So we need a vaccine to help end the AIDS pandemic. We're at a really exciting moment, I think, for HIV vaccine design. And because the technologies that we're using to try to make an HIV vaccine, we're starting to get evidence that those are good ideas and good technologies. We conducted a clinical trial to test one strategy for how to get started to make an HIV vaccine, and it worked better than we could possibly imagine. Universal vaccines are dependent upon finding broadly neutralizing antibodies. And the first of these broadly neutralizing antibodies to HIV were found in the 1990s, in the early 1990s. Now that was not a given. It was somewhat surprising perhaps because HIV is extremely variable. So there are literally hundreds of thousands of different strains of HIV. But nevertheless, there are certain parts of the surface of the virus that it keeps constant. For HIV, only a universal vaccine will work because there are so many different strains and no one knows which strain they're going to be exposed to. Because the spike protein on HIV is so variable, we need to induce very particular kinds of antibodies directed to specific patches on the surface of the spike protein that don't change very much from one HIV isolate to the next. These viruses are so flexible that it's really important to identify the sites that are not going to be as, as flexible, as mutable. Then teasing apart different antibody responses to those sites, some are better than others, and then figuring out how we can make a vaccine that can make the good antibodies. Those antibodies are very different from most antibodies that humans produce. They're very, very advanced antibodies is one way to think about it. And so the vaccine that we're trying to make is more complicated. And we think it will require multiple different shots of multiple different vaccine immunogens. It's very much like educating the immune system, training an athlete, if you will, in which each shot is another training regimen and the athlete gets stronger and faster and more skilled. And we're just trying to do the same thing to the B cells and the antibodies. If we can succeed, then it'll have massive impacts on human health. And in the case of HIV, we've still made a lot of contributions that help in vaccine design for example, for the COVID, when it emerged in 2019, historically, it's never been so fast that we have the vaccine ready in 10 months. It's because people working on the HIV field in the past uh, like 10 or 30 years, so already gained a lot of experience. When you go to work every day, you're thinking, well, what's the point of my job? Well, I'm trying to ultimately save lives so people can go on and do what they want to do. And it's, it's a privilege, to be honest.